Moving right along with our second set of notes in the Unit 3 Biological Basis of Psychology, we're talking about the kind of sister of the nervous system, which would be the endocrine system. This is the body's slow chemical communication, whereas the nervous system is the very fast electrochemical, more electricity than chemical communication system. Endocrine is slower and more chemical, completely chemical. So it's under normal circumstances, um, it works in parallel with the parasympathetic nervous system to sustain our basic processes. So parasympathetic nervous system, right, keeps us at homeostasis. And under normal circumstances, the endocrine system kind of works with parasympathetic to keep us right there. In a crisis, however, it works to support the actions of the sympathetic nervous system, right? So in a crisis or stressful situation, the endocrine system kicks in as like a backup guy for the sympathetic nervous system. So you cannot say that the sympathetic nervous system releases adrenaline into the system because it's more complex than that. The sympathetic nervous system kicks in to prepare us very quickly for fight or flight. The endocrine system realizes this and it does its thing to release adrenaline from the adrenal glands to kind of give us sustained energy behind our sympathetic nervous system. So an example of how this all works. While walking down the street, a man pulls a gun on you, okay? Very scary. The hormone epinephrine, or adrenaline, is released into the bloodstream, sustaining the body's defensive reaction of fight or flight response. So we immediately, our, our sympathetic nervous system immediately kicks in and allows us to have immediate action. Also immediately, the adrenal glands start to secrete adrenaline and eventually we'll get that adrenaline high, adrenaline being epinephrine. The endocrine system finishes what your sympathetic nervous system starts. So keeping your heart pounding and your muscles tense ready for action. Hormones is how the nervous system communicates. So neurons and neurotransmitters is how the nervous system communicates. So hormones are how the endocrine system communicates. They're chemicals synthesized by the various endocrine glands and secreted into the bloodstream. They have similar structure and function as many neurotransmitters. Okay, so this kind of just compares for you hormones and neurotransmitters. Hormones being very slow, neurotransmitters very fast. Hormones last longer. They can last weeks or even months, whereas neurotransmitters are very brief, right? They send and then they're gone. The method of transmission for hormones is in the bloodstream, so hence why it's so much slower than neurons with neurotransmitters in the nervous system, because that's electrical and very fast. Here's the thing, they are the same thing. Hormones and neurotransmitters are the same thing, they're just manufactured and located in different parts of the body, right? They're just made to kind of be sisters and back each other up, essentially. Um, neurotransmitters in the neurons in the nervous system, hormones being, a, they're made by a gland in the body and bloodstream. The pituitary gland. So now we'll talk about different glands. It is the master or king gland. It attempts to keep all endocrine responses under tight control. The pituitary gland is under the control of the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus being a part of the brain that we're gonna talk about. It sends out hormone signals to the other endocrine glands. So you might be asked a question about what is the direct link between the nervous system and the endocrine system. This is it, my people. The hypothalamus, a part of the brain, part of the nervous system, controls the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is what controls the entire endocrine system. So the pituitary gland will release certain glands that go to the certain glands and say, you should now secrete your hormones. And that's how it works. We've got the thyroid and parathyroid glands. These are in our neck. They regulate metabolic, physical growth, and development, but also calcium rates. Okay, this is our physical growth. Adrenal glands, kind of in our midsection, as well as our pancreas. Adrenal glands, like adrenaline, right? They regulate our fight or flight response, but also metabolism. So they release epinephrine. Epinephrine is adrenaline. The pancreas reg regulates levels of sugar or glucose in the blood by releasing the hormone called insulin. And insulin is what in the bloodstream breaks down glucose. So if someone is diabetic, right, they have trouble with their pancreas. They aren't releasing enough insulin or don't have any in the first place. 
are gonads. These being, um, they regulate bodily development, our secondary sexual characteristics. So um, ones that aren't necessarily absolutely essential in reproduction, but are other results of that, okay? Um, and they maintain rep reproductive organs in adults, okay? So they produce what is necessary to um, procreate, to reproduce, okay? So testes producing the testosterone, the hormone that causes everything essentially to work reproductively for men. And then the ovary produces estrogen and progesterone in women, allowing them to do their job in reproduction.